We've all heard of Gordon Cooper's gold. Gordon wasn't a guy who was all about the money. That, that's not him. It was just the discovery of it that was important to him. He just wanted to be part of it. Nobody knew then what else he brought back in space. But long before it was a Discovery Channel series, it actually was real. I've often wondered, during the Mercury program, Faith 7, Mercury 9, 15th of May 1963, how did Gordon Cooper actually find the gold in the wrecked ships? So I dug into this for you and really drew a blank. Even the legendary Gene Krantz, mission controller of the Apollo era, won't talk about it. There's no better person to ask than this person. But here I thought we were going to talk about Gordon Cooper, the spaceman, and we're moving into other areas right now. I know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah, okay. but... So what's going on? Well, the truth is NASA always has military missions. NASA always does other stuff. As a child, I thought they were exploring space. But in fact, they're part of the military. So as an inquiring mind viewer, where do you begin? One tip from me is ask the big questions. What was really going on in the world in 1963? Oh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Nuclear weapons on the island of Cuba from the Soviet Union? Oh, they'd be good to spot from space. There are one or two now declassified, but originally very classified, NASA documents about the military specialist mission of Gordon Cooper's flight aboard Mercury 9, Faith 7. He deployed a strobe in space to see in the future if a strobe light in space could help with future docking operations. It didn't work. But we all know he found gold in the Caribbean. OK, why was he in the Caribbean? That's another big question to ask. A very unusual orbit. He flew over Cuba. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and just this week, I was sitting in the car waiting for Dorothy at the dentist or the doctor. I had half an hour to kill. And I love reading weird old books. And this is a classic. It's called The Map Makers. It's really old. I don't think I can even give you a link. It's... <sighs> It's musty and brown, but in it, there is gold. Let me read you this tiny paragraph. It says, the magnet was used as early as 1640 to discover ore bodies in Sweden, and the dip of the needle, an adaptation of the compass, was used to locate similar deposits in Wisconsin, my home state, as late as 1915. But subsurface mapping with a compass proved to be slow and a tedious task. For the instrument had to be firmly mounted and leveled at each measurement point to get an accurate reading. Makes sense? This drawback had been overcome with the development of a very secret device in Madison, Wisconsin in the early 60s. Aha! An airborne version of the magnetometer, sorry, it's hard to say, was soon developed and it was used to detect submarines. Tests using this newfangled instrument over known ore deposits proved successful, but the ultimate goal was to use it from space, the new high frontier. A modern type of magnetometer depends not on a compass needle dipping, but on the application of atomic physics it's getting my interest now. The sensing element in the device are spinning hydrogen nuclei 
Oh, this is great. All protons which precede a gyroscope is affected by magnetic force. So although it stays level, it will slowly turn. If you've ever had a gyroscope instrument in your aircraft, you need to make sure it's straight and level. And there's a knob called precession. So you align it to the horizon and make sure it hasn't processed. But that procession, its wobble or its movement, accurately measures magnetic anomalies. The US Air Force started using the magnetometer and christened it the Maggie, or simply the bird. It was soon used to map accurately the Earth's contours. Oh, that's interesting. But only worked 150 meters above the ground. But in, ooh, 1963, NASA tested it with Gordon Cooper on the Mercury program. Oh, hang on. That solves the mystery. <laughs> it was flown on Phase 7 Mercury 9 to spot metallic objects hiding in the jungles of Cuba. All gold hidden in shipwrecks. All it needed was to write down the latitude and longitude coordinates when the Maggie or his bird dipped and Gordon Cooper looked out of his capsule window. I didn't know any of that. Maybe you did. But that's the kind of research I like doing for you by reading old dusty <laughs> books. You can discover that the truth is out there.